and welcome back to my channel. It's Effie. Today's day seven of Vlogmas and yesterday I was supposed to post day six and that was an interview with Christina from Arthritis Dietitian. It's actually going up today. I wasn't able to access my computer and then it just took a while to download on my phone. So here we are. We're going to do it on Monday and that's okay. So when I talked to Christina, she mentioned something that really stuck out to me. And so I wanted to just kind of take a little shift with my idea that I had for today and talk about methotrexate and the positive thing that has happened in my life ever since I've taken it. And I know that there are many negatives and there's many drawbacks to treating RA, rheumatoid arthritis, or any chronic illness when medication is involved. I don't really want to focus on the bad side because I'm sure many of us have probably heard, read, or been told about it many times. And when Christina said that the medication, because she is a registered dietitian, she has tried, you know, incorporating lifestyle changes and everything. And she said, however, for her, it's not enough. And I was able to relate because I'm one of those people that needs a combination therapy. I have tried doing diets and in different healing modalities in the alternative medicine side, but it wasn't enough for me. So I don't feel that it's a bad thing if you need to take both or if you just decide one or the others for you, that's fine. But when she said that medication really gave her a chance to live a semi-functional life, that's something that I want to talk about today. I do take my methotrexate on Monday, so what's up to everyone who is on hashtag methotrexate Mondays? I'm with you as well. I literally just took my injection and so I thought it was fitting to talk about medication and the holidays because there's been many years and I've lived with rheumatoid arthritis for 15 years so there's been a, quite a few times where I haven't really been able to enjoy the holidays to the full extent that I was used to for reasons being that I was in a bad flare I couldn't walk well or I was just in too much pain to really enjoy anything so with anyone who's out there struggling right now I see you I hear you and I believe you because I've been there in that dark place and I didn't think it was going to get better. And it eventually did. I'm not here to say that if you keep the faith and stay positive that things will get better immediately, maybe not. And it took me some time to find the regimen that works for me. It took some time to heal my body after a tremendous flare or just get back on track. So it's just about giving yourself grace and patience. And also with what Christina said, I wasn't sometimes able to live a functional life. You know, if there was a party or an event or something that I wanted to do that was outside walking, like a light show or anything in regards to holiday events, it was hard for me. For four years, I wasn't even able to walk well because of my knee damage. Well, leading up to the last one or two years prior to my replacement, I would say those are the years that were the hardest. And now I have had surgery and I'm able to walk again. But the medication that I'm on, methotrexate, has really helped me dance again. I love dancing. I love going out dancing. Obviously, right now with the pandemic, I'm not going anywhere. But when it is safe to do so, I would love to go out dancing. I'm able to get in and out of my car without assistance before I needed assistance. And there's times when I wake up and I don't have any pain or inflammation. And I'm able to go about my day at 7 a.m. just like anyone else. Other days, I have my bad days too. But these are the positive things that have come into my life from taking medication. And I know that there's medication shaming out there and people just want to heal naturally. And if you can do that, all power to you. I want to know your secrets as well because, again, like I've said, I've tried healing naturally. Well, semi-naturally, not fully. But for me and many others out there, a combination approach works the best. I just don't feel for me that was the smart choice just to rely on diet changes, lifestyle changes because... It's only one piece of the puzzle, like Christina says in her talk. So this video right now that I'm recording is going to go up after me and Christina's chat. And so it will make a lot more sense. But for those of you who tuned in, let me know what you thought about her statement. If you feel medication has given you a semi-functional life or maybe full functional life. And if you have any positives that you feel have come out of being on medication. Because medication... I have to say is a blessing in disguise yes we see that there's a double-edged sword like I explained but one of those sides is being able to live life and I know what it's like not to live life I know what it's like to be robbed of things that I want to do 
and then be able to do them again. And I was having a talk with someone not too long ago, but we were talking about 1950s housewives, long story short, and their hairstyles and everything. And then Lucille Ball from I Love Lucy came up. And I remember reading a while ago that she also suffered from RA. I don't know the full extent of it because from what I've read, I couldn't really find much about her story. If anyone has any knowledge, or maybe I'm wrong, maybe she didn't have RA, but that's the last I've read about it. But back then in the 1950s, 60s, people didn't even have the stuff that we have now. So we have to count our blessings. We have to be thankful and grateful, especially during this holiday season, even if you are going through a rough patch. Maybe you're not going through a rough patch and you have before like me. It's really important to take time to be mindful of where you've been and where you want to go. And so I think for me, after I took my injection today, some days I don't want to take it. I know like it's like after 15 years, I don't really want to inject myself anymore. It really gets to the point where it's just so tiring, even though it's like something you do, like you drink water. It's like you, you do it within a couple seconds and you're done. But just leading up to that, sometimes it can be such a drag and really puts you down. And so when you get into that headspace of, you know, what are the bad things that will do to you, you have to also see the good of it as well. And hopefully in the coming years, there'll be a breakthrough and we won't necessarily have to rely on injections weekly or monthly or infusions. And I hope that for all of us is a miracle to occur because we all deserve it. I mean, it's not easy to suffer alone in silence. It's not easy to not be able to do things. And I feel this is why as a community, we have all come together to share our stories because sometimes those even closest to us can't even understand because they're not going through it. Life still goes on and we become adaptable. And as human beings, we are adaptable. It might take time to accept change, but at the end of the day, it's for our own benefit to just roll with the punches and if RA knocks us down, we have to get up and just keep going and keep fighting you know, the dragon, quote unquote, and you know, just rise up. That's all I have for today's vlog. And let me know in the comments below what you think and what your thoughts are, if you agree with me or not, and your experiences.